My mom um, was an Irish Catholic lady raised in Philly. She never backed down from a challenge. Extremely competitive, um, very superstitious, very athletic, overwhelmingly compassionate and loving, and always looking for the positive in every situation. She was, she was my mom, and that was what she called her grandmother, and that's what she wanted to be. My kids absolutely loved going to my mom's house. You know, she, she had sweets everywhere and always baking, and then they knew where she had the Twizzlers hidden and where, you know, the, the French toast sticks that I wouldn't buy. She had them in the freezer, and they knew where everything was. She loved imparting her knowledge and passion for life on, on everybody, but especially the kids, my kids. She thought her diagnosis was a blessing. She said it was like being at a living wake because as soon as people hear cancer, everybody reacts. The entire community reached out and my mom got back in touch with her friends from high school that she hadn't talked to in decades and they started having slumber parties again and her friends from college had girls night out and my mom kept every single letter that she was ever given um, since she was diagnosed. She would always read them at night and I feel like all these wounds that she had in her soul from life, her diagnosis showed her how many people truly loved her and showed her the impact she's had on the world, but most importantly, it allowed her to show herself what she's capable of. All these things that she always knew that were inside of her, but maybe she never felt like she had a chance to show the world. She, she didn't give an F. Like she just, she didn't want to know the reality and she just used it as an opportunity to Take each day is a blessing, and let's you know let's live it to its you know to its absolute potential. She she would people when I tell these stories like cannot believe it. She would for a while the the drug that she was on her, her chemo drug was a 46 hour drip, and she would have the bag, and she would go into New York City, meet her college roommate, go to Broadway shows and dinner. She played tennis with the bag, and she had neuropathy in her feet. And she like, didn't want to tell the doctor, because she's like, if he tells me I'm not allowed to play tennis, I'm not going to listen to him. So she just, she did, she wanted to ignore the, like, the reality of it, which, you know, at first was a little frustrating, but then you realize, hey, it's working for her, then, you know, just let her, let her do it. Even when she was in her final days, she, she just smiled at the face, literally in the face of death, she just kept smiling. And when we were headed into the hospital at the end, her final two and a half weeks in the hospital, she insisted we go on one more walk. We walked two miles. Um, we didn't know that she had over two liters of blood in her right lung. She didn't stop once. She didn't complain once. She just kept talking about how it's such a blessing to be outside breathing clean air which is also saying a lot because we're in Jersey, so I don't really know how clean the air was, but <laughs> um, I, I do think that my mom taught me more about life in her final days of dying than I could have ever learned otherwise. It was incredible to take those steps for my mom and to know that all the people that had supported me were supporting my family and supporting other families like mine. Project Purple became an extension of my own family when my mom became diagnosed, but being a part of the New York City Marathon family was something that I can't really put into words. And um, the day after chemo, I mean, the day after the New York City Marathon, I went to chemo with my mom. She was doing chemo every week, and I gave her my medal the night before, and she went into chemo and pulled the medal out of her bag and she was going around <laughs> showing everyone my medal and I didn't know that the oncologists and nurses and cleaning staff and patients were all following my progress on the app and they were all so proud of the fact that I mean it took us almost 10 hours to finish but we finished and it was so cool watching everyone pass my medal around and people were a few of the older ladies were wearing it and taking pictures and stuff and I just I've never seen my mom so proud of me before, but she said that hopefully with the funds raised from the marathon, maybe it would give somebody else a chance that she felt like she didn't really have. 
So now, when my mom passed away, I thought, all right, we gotta do this again because I was planning on doing it and this year my mom was saying she was definitely gonna be at the finish line. But the cool thing that I've learned is that she's not going to only be at the finish line. She's with me every training run. I feel her in the breeze, I see her in the flowers, I hear her in the birds, I see her in the sky, and it makes me feel connected to her on a level that I don't think could have other could have happened otherwise if I wasn't training for a marathon. I think it's very healing. I've always in my head wanted to do a marathon. Um, I have some lower back issues that have um, prevented it in the past. So every time, last year I thought about doing it with Mandy and my mom almost had a heart attack and I was like, mom, you've got enough issues. Like, let's not, <laughs> let's not worry about me doing this. So, but I've always wanted to do it and thought this is the, the perfect time and, you know, use this opportunity to, to not only do something that's on my bucket list, but to raise money and, and hopefully help spread awareness um, and, addition, and raise additional funding for this disease. It's helping me heal and helping me sort of transition from having my mom here physically to having her out there spiritually. So I know she'll be at the finish line and I'm excited to do this with my sister because New York City Marathon, come on, it's just like a huge block party. Great! Glad to be done! Marathon finisher! Woo! Woo!